Good morning, everyone. Uh, I will speak English, hopefully, uh, more understandable than Polish. Um, and I understand that I'm the person who stands between you and, and coffee and, and cookies, so <laughs> I'll try to make it quick. The general idea of my speech is to tell you a little bit about uh, Polish media and uh, sort of divisions in Polish society, because as everyone in Europe, we are divided. And uh, if you look through the window on how the people are walking on the street, you will not necessarily know where this division are coming from. And that's sort of basic thing. Then we go to the media structure. Then we go to the efforts that, uh, of such a noble persons like Eva, who was one of the pioneers of independent free media here in Poland. And uh, I cannot tell enough good things about Eva. Not to annoy York. So. <laughs> all right. Um, um, well, first of all, uh, the, the Polish media and division, it, all, it always goes back as far as 1945. 1945, as you know, was the end of the Second World War. The Europe celebrated the freedom. We, not necessarily so, because uh, Poland started the war as a part of an anti-German coalition. Then was in this coalition to the end of the war, but uh, the result of the war was that uh, our friends and allies gave us to the Soviet Union uh, in sort of political trade in Yalta. Uh, this resulted um, in a situation when the previous government was in exile and the people who were loyal to previous government were a sort of second-class citizens. It, 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 you can. Uh, compare it very much to the colonization on up or apartheid in South Africa, when people who were a minister in ministerial position, have graduated in uh, like a few years ago, did their best to serve the country and of, of course build their families. And so were persecuted, not allowed to work uh, for uh, in order to their qualification. That, that's at least, or they were persecuted, killed, uh, murdered. Grab, uh, and, and their corpses are still being uh, looked for in the cemeteries. Are you aware of the Wączka, of uh, the Polish heroes of the uh, independent army? Some of you, yes, but those who are not, I tell very, very, very briefly that uh, Polish heroes like, for example, Ratmisz Pilecki, the person who voluntarily went to Auschwitz and uh, wrote reports from the place and uh, was uh, coordinating a re re resistance movement that was sort of nothing like Aloy Alo in f uh, this famous British comics, but this really people were uh, staying on the line between death and, and, and life and life every day. Uh, by the way, if you will find the time, the Rotmisch Pilecki's original house, where he, when he was arrested, is like 200 meters from here. So it's really good to, to see, and but pretty nice, pretty nice building, actually, close to the subway line. But there was no subway at the time when he was living there. Um, and uh, Rotmisch Pilecki went out of the Auschwitz, then fought in the Warsaw Uprising, then was. 1945 came, he was called by communists, executed, and put to the dump. So this Polish hero fighting against, and because he probably knows some things about communists who were at the time in, the, in power. Uh, so if you had the colonization, you have ob obviously the colonizers. The colonizers were the Russians, but the Russians, as normally colonizers do, uh, are trying to find a loyal tribe within the local population that's going to be subdued. So uh, this loyal tribe was a communist, Polish communist, of various ethnic backgrounds, including Polish even. And um, they were serving very loyally to the Moscow. In fact, uh, until the end of 80s, the decision who is in charge in Poland, what politics is being made, that was decision from Moscow. Yes. and. Uh, parties that were uh, fighting each other within Polish government were really fighting, telling Moscow, we, we will do better than those traitors, anti-communists. Anti you know, we are the real ones, guys, so please 
vote for us and we will execute those other guys and you will be happy. Uh, so if you look at the political spectrum from left to right, all the colors of the society, you will find out that for a brief time, for the 50 years practically, Poland was ruled by very tiny a fragment of the political spectrum, right? So everyone else was in the opposition. Uh, regardless, if you were a leftist, centrist, agriculturalist, uh, Catholic, right-wing, nationalist, or something that is uh, in Poland, but is, if, difficult to say, is like Jagiellonian nationalism. That, uh, la, that's like, um, this is actually uh, 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 people who believe that the state uh, from like 250 years ago will re-emerge and they are already patriots of this future state comprising from Poland, Belarus, Ukraine, uh, Lithuania, Estonia and so on. Whatever, such a people also exist. All of them were in opposition to the ruling communists. When, and the communists were, of course, mainstream. They had the media. They were uh, forming Poland. And if you look at present day uh, uh, electoral maps, but this year and, and last year is not necessarily so, but previously, you will see that um, the borders of uh, new territories are very visible because they are voting for civic platform. They are voting for some weird uh, leftist organizations en masse. Uh, those people are poor. They come from eastern part of Poland. Uh, they uh, and this was a country with population built by the Polish Communist Party, yes? Uh, of course, uh, I'm saying you general trends, like, like if you see the river, the river con is, is from many different streams and you will find even, even the streams that go backwards, but I'm trying to put general terms, so I'm not saying that everyone who lives in Wrocław or Szczecin is communist, but I'm saying that this, is, this was the general flow of thinking. Uh, right now it's being reversed by the wise policy of law and justice, but that we will stay, we will set apart. Then 1989 came and we had so-called revolution, our peaceful revolution, you probably heard about that, the communists fell finally, and, um, but the communists still were living and they allow uh, in the, this round table agreement to start one independent newspaper that will not, not be censored. Yes. The previous attempt to start free press in Poland was in reality, first of all, the, the, the press and all the thinking that was, because if you imagine that you have your parliament from your national country and government in exile. So what, they, what those people do? Well, they try to write down what happened what is the way of thinking, what is the political arguments, uh, argumentation, and so on, so on. And th this books, radios, uh, leaflets are coming from the West, more or less, uh, to, to, uh, and are reaching the, the general public. That was the case in Poland. The Poland was also different from the other communist country because we had a strange church, which despite all the infiltration by secret agents and all kind of bad guys, was very, and is, and hopefully will stay that way, very powerful national institution. Not only a re religious one, but also national. Uh, 1989, we have a round table agreement. Lots of people believe that this is it. Now communists will go, we will start to build new country. And... Um, uh, suddenly, uh, it turns out uh, that there is new newspaper, Gazeta Wyborcza. Anyone heard about Gazeta Wyborcza? Anything? Yes? Do you know Gazeta Wyborcza and you hear that is being chaired by the brave uh, anti-communist fighter, Adam Michnik. Anyone heard about Adam Michnik? Anyone thinks he is a brave anti-communist fighter who fought all his youth against evil empire, something like that, yes? Do you agree with that? Well, in fact, uh, Adam 
uh, the, like I, I, I told you about this tiny minority, two or three percent, and those people were obviously uh, had different group fighting each other for the power within the Communist Party, and and sort of uh, um, Adam Michnik was from the family who lost one of those battles in 1968, name, mainly, namely, and he was fighting against the other faction, and he recruited, he sort of adopted himself to the uh, independence movement, with this other 96% of the various political uh, strata, various political views in Poland. So he adopted, he subscribed to that and said, yes, we are together, we're fighting this evil communists. Um, and th this is co sort of common knowledge now, but like 15 years ago, if I said this from this point, you, you will kick me out, because th that was so much out of uh, political correctness in Poland to say that. I mean, this guy was in prison, he was fighting. And anyway, uh, Gazeta Wyborcza started, and Gazeta Wyborcza sort of was... Uh, um, a medium selling 500, 600,000 copies, well, not that much, but very influential. If you were an intellectual in Poland, if you graduated from anything like high farmers, college, you had to read Gazeta Wyborcza from between 8 to 9 a.m. And then you were saying what you read and talked to other people confirming that you guys are on the common ground and you are saying the same stuff, right? That about intellectual plurality in Poland. And obviously all the media that were not in agreement with Gazeta Wyborcza with the thesis, because obviously um, one of our colleagues researched the Gazeta Wyborcza and their political line was, was like that, but they were always right. You know, whatever they said this way, when they turned, they were always right and just, and they, again, so the people had problems. The easiest way is to forget. So, like the, the the history starts from today. Yes, we read Gazeta Wyborcza. We know what is right, what is wrong. History starts from today. Um, independent media in Poland, and obviously after 1989, there were numerous initiatives of launching independent press, uh, of launching uh, daily that were connected, for example, to Polish people living in the United States. They, they said, okay, we'll give you money, organization, let's start it. For some reason, it didn't work out, um, mainly because the Gazeta Wyborcza knew that it cannot have any competition. So by, uh, by uh, putting pressure on advertisers, by putting pressure on governments. Like, imagine that you have some, I don't know, meat factory and you produce a lot and there is a guy coming from you saying, like, we will have a small newspaper here in Warsaw, we speak about political issues, why don't you give us ad? So you are giving the ad, then you got a phone call saying, are you crazy? I mean, <laughs> you gave them ad advertisement? Do you want to have, uh, Financial control tomorrow? Yeah, of course. That's Poland. That's democratic Poland, 1990s, early 2000s, up to 2015. Um, uh, broadcast media. The broadcast media were obviously recruited by communists and 100% pro-government. You, you could not be anyone in broadcast media if you didn't agree with communists. The best if you if you subscribe to the party, that would be nice. I'm speaking about situation pre-1989. Um, Polish national television, you heard about TVP, that's uh, right now it's on our side, but this is very strongly connected to politics, like probably in most countries. So no wonder that uh, th this is a tool that is pretty much transferring the politics or, or the policy of the government to the people. And independent TV stations like TVN and Polsat. Po uh, the first uh, 
independent television was Polsat. Um, it was 1930, 1993, 1995, something like that. Uh, and uh, at the moment, the, the president of the Republic was Lech Wałęsa. Poland adopted the law very much like France, that we will set up the broadcast committee, which will um, overlook uh, independently, unbiased, the, uh, the, the media and, of course, television and radio. Uh, first idea was to split television from the radio. Another idea, um, that is national media, and give the concession to the or, or license to the private TV station in Poland. The first private TV station in Poland was Polsat. You will find that on, on, on the TV station and so on. And they started uh, from a very low level, but uh, they got practically free, huge advertisement income. And uh, the gentleman who was, uh, who, who was awarded with this gift as uh, TV license for Poland and subsequently growing advertising market was a gentleman that has like four different passports issued for three different last names. He was previously trading something in Germany. Uh, then, well, very lucky businessman to, to say. Obviously connected to the former secret services uh, in Poland. There were practically two. They were. Uh, at the communist time, two secret services, one with uh, um, police or internal uh, service of Poland, another with military. So this guy was with police and internal uh, minister of internal issues. Um, he started the Spolsat television from the very low, like, the, uh, anyway, uh, people who worked with them sort of dropped very quickly because it was obviously, it didn't have officially political agenda, but obviously was following the, the rules. Another television, that's uh, a TVN. Again, the gentlemen who were presented themselves as, uh, as uh, professional media players and so on turned out to be uh, officers or co cooperators of the military secret service. And uh, the money for this operation came from the so-called the Operation Iron. No, the, um, the FOSS. Uh, uh, the FOSS is... Uh, uh, the, during the 1970s, Edward Gerrit, the communists, uh, made big debts in the foreign banks in order to speed up the economy of Poland. The money were invested in various roads and so fundraise and so on and so on. Uh, then 1980, 1981, when the martial law came, all these debts started to be due. Communists didn't have money, so Polish, uh, the, the value of Polish debt was decreasing, yes? Because uh, the, the, this, uh, the so called markets were convinced that they will not get their money back. So if you had one dollar of debt, you could buy it for 20 cents. And obviously, the guys came up with the idea maybe with those few dollars we have, we will buy these debts for 20 cents. That's five times cheaper. Uh, the country was involved in this illegal and secret operation. And uh, of course, the, this was the military intelligence in charge of this. And the guys took about one billion of dollars, purchased the actual debts for about 50, 60 millions, and the rest was spread between different uh, secret ventures probably in, it started in, in, in Panama. So they were really first offshorers of the world. Uh, this money came back uh, to Poland as uh, founding money for between other, for TVN or, or the 
TVN, that's new television. Uh, and this are media are mainstream. In the same, at the same time, uh, started uh, the construction of the present day media, because the Poland is probably one country, and I will finish pretty much with this, uh, the one of the few countries in Europe that has really uh, polarized media, which means that you cannot easily tell lies because someone else will catch you by hand and, and show it to the people. Uh, and this started from, uh, of course, Gazeta Polska and, and, and uh, Tomek Sakiewicz and people who were started really in early 1990s to, to write uh, mm, the truth, but the way, how you, how you survive with this, if you have no advertisement, if, if you have no money, because the, it, when your uh, distribution is weak, how do you, what do you do? Well, first of all, you go to the people and say, please finance our, uh, give us money for our operations, because otherwise you will not know anything. So, Gazeta, Wyborcza, uh, Gazeta Polska and Nasz Dziennik was kind of out of necessity. They, they invited the idea that media should be very much connected to the readers, right? Serving the purposes of readers and, and educating them in the way the readers want. Of course, you cannot omit Radio Maria and Nasz Dziennik and uh, this Toruń uh, magnificent organization. Although we have to say that this is very much like it's 98% of Catholic religion and cat forming of, because you, you don't really are Catholic, but you are becoming one by, by fighting with yourself. Um, and 2% of the Radio Maria is, uh, is religious. Okay, and uh, the, the breaking point in Polish media history, last sentence, was uh, of course uh, April 10, 19, uh, 2010, and the Smolensk catastrophe when people in the large, large audience saw to what degree they have been lied to regarding. Uh, the President Kaczynski, what he was, what was his purpose, because all that mainstream media, TV and Polsat, uh, Telewizja Polska to a certain degree, because they were governmental, uh, Gazeta Wyborcza, uh, they were using its power to fight the political opposition. And, and this was the, the, the few days of April 2010, showed us, as viewers, as readers, to what degree we have been lied to. Yes? That the reality had nothing to do with the pictures we see on TV, the TV and, and the articles we read on, in the newspapers. And obviously, uh, that was the split that, that they, despite their huge advantage, please remember that Civic platform won the election in 2011, so they had like eight years. <laughs> okay. Anyway, quickly, the division in Polish society, who is us, who is them, comes from 1945, and really, who is whether you associate yourself with the uh, with the colonial power of Russia and and their servants or with the people who didn't have any power in Poland since 1945 to, to, to 1989. And this is really like uh, from generation to generation. If, if you know that your, your father had problems entering the, I don't know, law school or something like that because his father was fighting against communists and Germans in the army, well, okay, so you kind of, it, it shapes your thoughts. All right, so I'm, Thank you very much. This was only interesting.